In this lesson, we're actually introducing you to HTML. We will actually build out a basic HTML page with a simple notepad or text document. So I'm on my MacBook and I'm going to use text edit, but on Windows you can actually use notepad and do the same thing. For this instruction, you can see we're going to follow this. On Windows you would actually use notepad, on Mac I'm going to use text edit. I'm going to create a folder on my desktop. APCSP and then a folder inside there called HTML. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'll slide this over a little bit. So I'm going to right click, I'll make a new folder, call it, call it APCSP, go inside of there, make another folder, call it HTML. So now we have our folders, let's look at how we actually can use basic text documents in both Mac and on Windows to create HTML pages. So if I scroll down on our class page, you can see here I have how you create it using Notepad. And if you're on Mac, I have it here showing how. See, I click on New. I click on Save. I type the name.html. Make sure you change that to All Files, and you click Save. For on a Mac, text, go to Preferences. Make sure you change it to Plain Text, and make sure you check that. Then you need to open up a new document, and you can go ahead and save it. That's how you're able to do that on both a Windows and a Mac. So let's go ahead and create our first web page. You see, we're going to follow this. And we're actually going to make something that looks like this. And your, your text document will have all this codes in there, um, but it'll actually look like this. So I'm going to follow this. And when I code over here, I can actually check it here because remember, this is actually that file. It's a web page in a notepad document. Um, before we actually start, there are some standard tags. And I'm going to open up Chrome. That way I can have a different view. So let's say I went back to Gantt Tech. And I go to Facebook. And I go to YouTube. Why not? So there, every single web page has a basic structure. And you can actually see the code behind any website by clicking on, you can do view page source or inspect. We'll talk about inspect later on this school year. I'm going to do view page source on all three of these sites. The very first tag, no matter what web page you go to, so let's check and see. You have doc type HTML, doc type HTML on YouTube, doc type equals HTML. So no matter what web page you visit, the very first tag is that. And how HTML tags work, you have your greater than less than sign. And let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see. Let's make it 18. Yep. And then you have some type of keyword in the in the middle. And normally you have a beginning and an ending tag, and that's normally the case. But like for this doc type HTML you actually don't have an ending tag. This is just doc type HTML. So no matter what web page you see, the first code you will see is actually that. I'm going to go down. So the very next tag that you definitely will see, let's check. We'll see, we see HTML. Over here, we see HTML. Over here, we see HTML. So no matter what, so no matter what, the, first, the next tag you always see on a web page is HTML. This actually does have an ending tag. So if I go all the way to the bottom, you can see the very last tag that I see is actually the same HTML. So I'm going to add HTML here, and I'll give me some space, and I'll put HTML at the end. Well, here's how the tag ends. You put a slash in front of the same tag. So what this says, the browser comes and says, okay, this document is an HTML document. Now, the browser says, okay, everything after this I'm going to treat as HTML. So if I embed a code, an HTML code, I will show the right format or style based on that code that you give me. Then it comes all the way down to the end and it says, okay, you're wrapping up your HTML file. So, 
These tags are in every single web page that you visit. So let's go back to the top. The next tag you will always see after HTML is this. You can see it says head. Go to my, my Facebook, you can see it says head. If I go to my YouTube, you can see it says head. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Head. And if I find it, my ending tag is right here. So all of this for Facebook is inside of his head. And if you look at it, or this is YouTube, if you look at it, it has some meta tags, it has some styles, it has some links for icons. It has some JavaScript inside of here. Similarly, for my site, if I do my header, if I come up here. So all of this is inside of, again, I have some links, have some JavaScript, I have some styling, you can see some CSS. So you're going to think of your head as the information that helps the browser, um, but it's not actually seen on the page. I mean, what do I mean by helping the browser? It helps um, search engines and spiders to see what is the content of this page, or it actually provides some CSS styling and some JavaScript that you're actually using on this page. Within the head, also, there's a, an important tag. So you can see this says Gantech. For Facebook, this one is here, and for YouTube, this says YouTube. So inside of my head, there's a tag called title. So the reason this browser shows YouTube here is because it shows it here. And if I do the same thing here and I do my search for title, if I do my same search here, you can see it says Gantech and it has my exact name. So inside of your head, the browser looks for this title and whatever you put in here will be the name of the tab in the browser. So for ours we'll put Jamie's class schedule. I'm not going to save it yet, I'm going to add one last title and one last tag and then we will actually move on. So, everything in here is not seen to help the web page. Everything that is seen is actually inside of the body tag. At the very bottom, I have the exact same thing, body tag. So, if I search for mine, body, you can see main menu, home, about, that is all that seen on my page, when I come over here, you can see my menu, home, about, all these things. Everything that is actually seen starts in the body. And if I put my ending tag, this is the very last, second to last tag at the very end. So everything inside of here is actually seen. You see we did the basic structure. We're going to do color, headings, underline, bold. It says, open up notepad or text edit, save the file as my schedule, type my full name on the next line, type the school, then type every period. So, I'm going to do this. Jamie Gant. So, you can see now I have my full schedule, and we want to add in some basic tags. If I save this and actually refresh my page, even though these are on separate lines here, you can see it does not show up like that on the web page. That's because we have to add in our HTML tags to format it how we want. So the first one it says add a line break to move Ronald Reagan to the next line. We're going to make our last name bold, our first name italics, and our school underline. So this to move Ronald Reagan to the next line. Remember we start out like that. And HTML tags are pretty simple once you get used to them. Um, and you can kind of figure them out based on what you're trying to do. So if I want to add a line break, the tag for that is BR for break. Now, I'll save that and I'll refresh. 
and you can see it moved down Ronald Reagan Doral. Now, I said most tags have an ending tag. BR is one that does not have a lending ending tag, but if you think about it, it actually makes sense. This is saying, show the text Jamie Gant, then break the line, which means move to the next line. I don't need to have this. This does not exist. But when a tag does not have an ending tag like this, normally what you will see is something like this. So this says, okay, break the line, and I don't have an ending tag. So you might see something like this or like this, and I'll leave it like this so you can see. Said so we wanted to add bold to our last name, italics to our first name. So very early in HTML, you can see it pretty much took the first letter of what you're trying to do, and that's how you actually coded it. So for bold, it's simply B. And if I save this and I refresh, you can see everything is bold. But why is that happening? It's happening because what? I did not put an ending tag. So obviously, I need to do my ending tag here. When I save it and I refresh, there it is, Jamie. Gantt is actually bold. So let's make my first name italics. So what do you guess that is? I, right? Very simple. And my ending tag, I. Save it, refresh. You can see Jamie, he's actually in italics. Make Ronald Reagan underlined, you, you, save, refresh. Very simple. Next, let me talk about bold and italics. So again, HTML1 it would just be an I. But everything now is more semantic. Semantic means it describes what it's actually doing. So instead of saying B, which really doesn't mean anything, something's bold, it's actually strong. So you will see the semantic word strong. Or when something's italics, it's actually emphasized. So you'll see EM. If I save that, you can see both of them work. All right, moving on. You can see we want to add headings to our periods. And you can go from headings one, two, three, four, five, six. So what is a heading? This on Gantech is a heading. It's pretty much like a title of a section. So let's go ahead and add in our headers. Typically headers, we start out like this, and it's just header one through header four, so H1, H1, I'll end it there. Let's do my H2. And I'm just doing this to show you your differences. But in yours, you can format them how you want. H3. H4. There is no H5 unless you customly create that in CSS. So I'm just going to make the rest of these. Let's make them all H4s. So I'll save it refresh and you can see H1's what headers do is they put a space before a space after they also make it bold H1 is the biggest H2 smaller H3 smaller H4 pretty much the same our last tag I want to show you is font color so for example if I wanted to make AP computer science font color the tag is actually font but if you think about font, you have size, you have style. Is it Times New Roman or Arial or Verdana? You actually have size and color. So those are called attributes. If I want to change the color, I'm simply going to do space color equals to. Now, most people think the ending tag will look like this. But remember, this is just an attribute. You don't include an attribute, the ending tag. So now you can see I have my headers and the very last tag following our thing I want to show you is font color. So for font color, come back over here. If I wanted to make this, I'm going to spread this out some more. 
So now that I've added, this is the basic tag. Web browsers know basic colors. So red, green, green, black, orange, all those colors, I simply have to type it in. So for example, if I wanted orange, I type orange. I do file save. I duplicate, uh, you refresh my page, you can see it shows up here. Let's do it again. Let's say I wanted a specific color. I'm going to go to colorpicker.com and this is called in hexadecimal. We will actually cover this later on um, in how computers understand colors. Um, but this hashtag six digit number, the first two is red, your next two is your green, and the last is your blue. So this hexadecimal color, which is RGB, first two equals your red colors, the hint of red, the shade of red, this is your green, and this is your blue. So if I wanted a certain shade, say I wanted this light shade, the number is F2DCC. So over here, I'm simply going to type hashtag F2DCAA. I'll go ahead and save. And if I refresh, it's that hint. So the last way to do colors is you can type in the exact color or you can actually type in the hexadecimal color code. Um, font size is the exact same way. That's another attribute. I can say size equals to. Um, and then I could say whatever 12 points or I could say plus one when I save it and I refresh you see it added that remember you can always come up here and I have this link to W3 schools which gives you a bunch of other tags that you can also add into your code with that, go ahead to the next video.